Hey everyone, today we are looking into Sheng Pinru, a woman who was a Chinese socialite in the city of Shanghai in the 1930s. But in 1937, her life dramatically changed when war broke out with Japan and Japanese forces occupied the city. Her story has inspired many books and films. But who was Sheng Pinru, and why has she become the focus of such attention? Zheng Pingru was born on some uncertain date in 1918, in what was then the town of Langxi, in the Zhejiang province in eastern China. Her father was Zheng Yuiwan, a Chinese nationalist at a time when the country was experiencing a protracted civil war. China had been racked by political instability for decades, ever since the British had intervened here in the so-called Opium Wars of the 19th century. Between the 1910s and the 1940s, varying groups would emerge, competing to seize power and build a new China, the most powerful being the Kuomintang, or Nationalists, and the Communists. Zheng's father was a senior commander with the Kuomintang, who served under Sun Yat-sen, the first president of the Republic of China in the early 1910s. Pingru's mother was Japanese and this was quite significant in her daughter's later story. When he was a younger man, her father had studied in Japan. During this time, he met and eventually married Henako Kimura, who subsequently adopted the name Zheng Huajun after their return to China. They had five children, Pingru being the second of their three daughters. Her family background is significant in Pingru's story, as her mother's ethnicity and nationality ensured that she learned to speak Japanese fluently during her youth, a trait which would become important in the 1930s. After they had returned to China, Zheng Pingru's father had taken up a teaching position at Fudan University in the city of Shanghai, a college which had been established in 1905. However, Pingru did not attend here when she reached her early adult years, and instead, studied at Shanghai College of Politics and Law. The Sheng family were not a poor or obscure one in Shanghai society in the 1920s and in the 1930s as she entered her late teens and early 20s. Pingru began to attend prominent social events in the city on a regular basis. At these, she was celebrated for her good looks, which were quite unique at the time given her mixed Chinese and Japanese heritage. A sign of her growing reputation as a Shanghai socialite was seen in 1937, when she was just 19 years of age. Well, she was asked to appear in the Liang Yu, or the Young Companion, a Chinese-English pictorial magazine which had been published in Shanghai since the mid-1920s. Liang Yu was effectively 1930s Shanghai's version of Cosmopolitan magazine. Later reports will suggest that she was sexually promiscuous and had many lovers in the late 1930s, but this can largely be dismissed and there is only evidence of Pingru having one boyfriend for a short period of time in her early adult years. In any case, Pingru's life soon became entangled with the traumatic political developments which were sweeping East Asia at the time. Ever since the beginning of the 20th century, the Empire of Japan had been increasing its power in the world of the Western Pacific, first effectively annexing Korea, and later interfering in China. Then in 1931, Japan invaded Manchuria, and established a puppet state of Manchukuo in what is now northeastern China. Sporadic conflicts broke out between China and Japan from 1931 onwards, but these did not expand beyond border skirmishes and diplomatic tensions. Yet, to most observers, it was clear that war between the two nations was inevitable. Despite her mother's heritage, Pingru's family were opposed to Japanese aggressions towards China, and as early as 1932, when she was just barely entering her teenage years, Pingru took part in a protest in Shanghai against Japanese expansionism in northern China. Then, the inevitable conflict finally came in 1937. 
an incident known as the Marco Polo Bridge incident in July of that year was exploited by the Japanese government as an excuse to initiate the Second Sino-Japanese War. China, a country which had failed to modernize quickly enough and create a powerful centralized western style state in the same way Japan had since the 19th century, stood little chance and within a few short months the major cities of Beijing, Shanghai and Nanjing had been captured and occupied by Japanese forces. However, as in Manchuria, the Japanese did not officially annex eastern China, but rather created a provisional government of the Republic of China as a puppet regime. This would subsequently become known as a reorganized national government in 1940, or the Wang Jingwei regime after its leading Japanese collaborationist. These governments were made up of Chinese collaborators who effectively governed eastern China in the interest of the emperor's government in Tokyo. Following the fall of Shanghai in November 1937, Sheng now joined the growing Chinese resistance movement and became an undercover nationalist spy. Also, she had a distinct value to units of resistance fighters within the city. Well, owing to her mother being from Japan, Pingru was fluent in Japanese. This meant she could now put this ability to good use as a spy who could infiltrate and take note on conversations amongst Japanese officials and soldiers who occupied the city. But tragically, this would soon embroil her in a conspiracy which would see her life cut extremely short. The assassination plot which Zheng Pingbru would become infamously associated in the late 1930s had Ding Mokun as its target. Ding had been a politician in the Republic of China during the 1920s and early 1930s, but following the Japanese occupation of much of the country in the 1930s, he joined the secret police of the collaborationist reorganized national government. In this capacity, he was active in Shanghai and had established a headquarters at 76 Jessfield Road, in the city where communists and other opponents of the Wang Jingwei regime were held prisoner and interrogated. It was in an awareness of his role in doing so that Malkin was selected as a target for assassination by nationalist resistance fighters in Shanghai in 1939. Pingru became involved in the plot against Malkin quite by chance. Many years earlier, he had served as the principal of her secondary school in Shanghai, and her handlers in the city amongst the resistance now decided that this former connection could be rekindled as a means of tricking her way into Malkin's company. Throughout 1939, several supposedly coincidental meetings between the pair were engineered on the streets of Shanghai or at social engagements and other events in the city. In the course of these, Pingru began seducing Malkin, and within a short time, the old man had fallen for her charms. Thus, by the autumn of 1939, Pingru was established in a relationship with Malkin, and was able to report on his movements and his actions. A decision was now taken by the nationalist resistance movement in the city to assassinate him by using information Pingru could supply. The night chosen to carry out the act was the 21st of December 1939, when Pingru and Malkin were due to attend a dinner party at a friend's house. When the night came, a plan was in place for Pingru to lure Malkin to a specific location on Nanjing Road, the main shopping through fair in the city, comparable with Fifth Avenue in New York City. Here, the resistance would have assassins lying in wait. Pingru simply had to get Malkin there. At the dinner party that evening, she accordingly requested Ding Malkin to drive her to Nanjing Road afterwards. Here she expressed interest in buying a coat in a fur shop, which they drove past, and which had been pre-selected as a site for the assassination. But in the minutes that followed, the assassination attempt ran into trouble. When they entered the shop, Ding became suspicious about two individuals 
he saw lurking outside on the other side of the street. When he abruptly left the shop and ran back to his car, the would-be assassins burst forward and attempted to shoot him, but they missed and he drove off, leaving Pingru still in the fur shop and the two assassins standing in the middle of Nanjing Road. Thus, the assassination had failed. The botched murder attempt spelled doom for Pingru. It was clear to Ding Mulken from the manner in which she had first requested him to drive her to Nanjing Road, and then made the surprise request to stop at the fur shop as they were driving past, that Zheng had helped plan the assassination attempt and was a member of the undercover resistance. Thus, shortly after the incident, he sent her a message to visit him at his headquarters on Jesfield Road. But before Sheng could even enter the building, she was detained by the secret police. She spent several weeks under confinement before the collaborationist regime of Wang Jingwei took the decision in February 1940 to execute her. She was killed in western Shanghai and later buried in Fu Shou Yuang Cemetery in the city. Owing to her young age at death, just 22, she never had any children and many of her family members died during the war years before China was finally liberated in 1945. As a committed nationalist, her mother moved to Taiwan along with the remnants of the nationalist movement following the communists' final seizure of power throughout mainland China in 1949. Mulken would go on to occupy senior positions within the regime in the years that followed, rising first to the position of Minister of Society and then the Minister of Transport within the reorganised national government. But he would not survive the end of the war and the collapse of Japanese rule in China. He was arrested in September 1945, just weeks after the surrender of the Empire of Japan to the United States. Charged with treason, he pleaded guilty in the hopes of a lenient sentence, but in July 1947, he was nevertheless executed in a Suzhou prison. For her role in trying to assassinate him in the winter of 1939, Ping Ru has the rare distinction of being honoured both by Communist China and its bitter enemy Taiwan, where the remnants of the nationalist movement, which Ping Ru had been a member of, moved the government of the Republic of China to in 1949. Ping Ru's story is fairly well known to the modern world, as a result of having been the inspiration for the 1979 novella Last Caution by Eileen Chang, a Chinese-American writer. Chang was born in 1920, just two years after Pingru, and had spent her youth in Shanghai before leaving the city during the Japanese occupation, so she had direct experience of the events which shaped Pingru's life. The book was subsequently adapted for the screen in a 2007 film directed by Ang Lee and also called Lust Caution. Although Pingru is loosely disguised in both Shang's novel, and the film as a character called Wang Jiaji, or Wang Chiaichi. There is no doubting that Chang based her on Pingru. Li's film adaptation won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival, and the acclaim has consequently made Pingru's story known to many more people than it otherwise would have been. Thank you so much for watching this video on Zheng Pingru. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like and a comment down below, and if you're new, one to subscribe. If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments, or there are links to my Instagram and email in the description. I hope you guys have notifications turned on, so you get all my videos as soon as I upload them. And anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.